right now I'm trying to recover from the mistake that I just made. This is Daniel Malenin. He's an assistant professor of history at the University of Denver. I'm going to hit some barbarians with clubs to try and prevent them from raiding my city. And right now, he's having a particularly hard time playing Civilization VI while being interviewed. And anybody watching me play will be like, why are you wasting two turns founding a city? Um, because I'm talking to you. <laughs> It's a game he doesn't often play in his free time, rather when he's in class teaching his medieval history course. There's been a million Civ games, um, and I actually use this specifically in class because I find the Civ games fascinating um, because the whole point of them is to like take a culture and distill it into the perfect representation of a culture. A recent study published in the journal Scientific Reports shows kids might get a brain boost from playing video games. The study took 5,000 kids and found the ones that played more than the average hour of video games each day wound up with higher intelligence scores than the ones who spent less time playing games. It's the exact reason Daniel uses this as a medium for his students to learn about ancient civilizations. Reading a book in your dorm room surrounded by all this stuff is not actually super conducive to absorbing information. So video games require you to actually focus, right, in a way that reading doesn't necessarily, right? We want people to be active readers. But that's, that's a skill you have to learn, whereas video games is sort of an intrinsic skill that a lot of them have already. Historical games like Civilization aren't the only types of video games with proven benefits. Even shooters have their perks as they can improve things like communication, eye-hand coordination, strategizing, and executive decision making. When I was in seventh grade, our science teacher had us play Sonic the Hedgehog so we can learn more about things like speed, acceleration, and centripetal force. The study found the intelligence boost might be from the enriched environments that force kids to tackle tasks they might not find in their everyday life. Researchers say the neural pathways involved in accomplishing the game might be involved in other types of real-world decision-making that factor into intelligence. It's like how we get people interested in stuff. It's really a wonderful gateway for thinking about history or whatever, right? Like Kerbal Space, you know, like you learn about orbital mechanics. And it's not an educational game. It's just a game where you learn how to shoot a rocket, you know? Minecraft lets you build whatever you want. Those are great things to do. The study didn't look at anything other than intelligence, so there's no saying how these games might affect aggression or any of the other concerns parents might have. So right now, I'm doing a bad job of settling a city, basically. But one thing is for certain, with all its possible intellectual benefits, this game hasn't improved Daniel's ability to multitask. I'm Dan Grossman.